that the summer of 1982 at the Barn Theater in Augusta, Michigan. And Marin was in the chorus uh, of the first show that I did. I think it was Unsinkable Molly Brown. We became fast friends, and when she moved to New York in the fall of 82, she stayed on my sofa for two weeks while she looked for an apartment. And um, Skylab was falling that summer. It was falling to earth. And so we would sing, um, we, around the apartment we would sing, Skylab, have you anything to say to me? And we thought we were hilarious. I've been sitting here racking my brain trying to figure out when I met her. And the reason I'm trying to rack my brain doing that is because I kind of don't remember my professional life without her. She's the person that I have performed with, the single person the most, um, I think probably in my lifetime actually and um, and it was always so much fun to perform with her and I, I, I knew whenever after ragtime whenever I heard Marin was on board I knew it was going to be fine no matter what it was and I was going to have a good time doing it. I was cast to do the workshop of passion and I walked in the door and I just remember this golden person who was singing and that was golden. It was so beautiful, and she was so beautiful, and what was coming from her was so beautiful, and it felt like there was light all around her. And then she kind of looked, and I was coming in, and she said, oh, Donna Murphy! And it was the first time we met, and we just went right into each other's arms, and I remember as we were hugging each other, thinking, oh my God, this person's going to be a friend for life. I just knew it. She was just just the most charming individual on his fellow. Oh God, you know, we were really gonna be friends. I just always felt like I could count on her. She always had my back, I always had her back. And hearing her gorgeous voice as well, you know, I mean, I, I can just still hear her voice and I'm so thankful for that. The thing about Marin was is that even though she had this, this, this fabulous quality, she was gorgeous and tall and blonde, she had, had this patrician um, uh, carriage to her. Deep down she was like a real good time broad. I mean she was just funny and smart and just loved to have a good time and wanted everybody else to have a good time. Watching this consummate professional beautiful gorgeous woman who should have been like she should have been some snotty you know untouchable type of, you know, just goddess, because that's certainly what she looked like, you know? And there was no one more down to earth and um, more full of fun. Um, no one who had a better laugh than Marin, Marin's laugh, my goodness. She's a hero, she always was. We look to those people in our youth that, that really inspire us, and that was it, she was it for me. And um, I, I hate that that beacon of light even though it will always be how she left us, that it's not continuing to move so that I can continue to follow it. We need something to follow. And I was following a light that's out. <laughs> Marin was so incarnate, so in her body, and in the last years of her life, she took all the skills and practices of a great diva, this shining diva, but it was as though she took all the practices and skills and put them toward how best to be trusting about exactly what was happening in her body and in her life. Marin is like a golden light wrapped in my heart. And she is also, as I'm speaking to you right now, she's utterly present. She's, she, she used to say to me toward the very end of her life, I am not done, I am not done. And she isn't done. We are not done. I was grieving the loss of my husband, but always, like, I, I didn't want to bring that up around them, you know. Um, but she would always be the first person to say, How are you doing? And that kind of kindness and selflessness, in a way, um, it's not that I didn't appreciate it then. I really did. So I don't have to, like, smack myself in the head and say, Why didn't you realize how, you know, rare and beautiful that was? Um, I did. What I couldn't calculate was how much I miss it.
when Marin should be trying to take care of herself, she's teaching, you know, everybody how to, you know, fight with grace, how to see the bigger picture, how to enjoy the teeny tiny little moments, find out what's most important. Marin taught us all that, you know, and the way that she lived and transcended cancer. The way that Marin handled her illness was astonishing to me. Um, first of all, the fact that she was so open about it. At first, took made, I was taken aback, but I was like, oh my God, she's, she's letting everybody know what she, what's going on with her. And everybody's different. Everybody has to deal with their illness in a different way. But she shared it with the world, and in doing so, she made changes and was an advocate for awareness and for education on the disease. I drove the getaway car when we brought her home from the hospital. We didn't know it would be the last time, but it was she wanted to get home. And she'd been in the hospital for a while. And um, so we got her home. And um, there were many, many friends that had that kind of relationship with her. Marin didn't, you know, um, shy away from surrounding herself with her friends no matter how ill she was. She felt that that was giving love back to them and, you know, from them. Honor Marin's legacy by c continuing her work with the advocacy um, in, in supporting causes that help look for a, a cure. You know, we've lost too many people to this disease. She is not gone for me and I know for other people, for Jason. Um, and I don't think she ever will be. But I think her biggest legacy is in our work and it's just to keep giving back the way she did and um, to uh, continue to do the best work we can in, under, you know, um, whatever circumstances because that's what she did. She just was amazing. It's really hard to find your place in this business because we all have to fit a box. But I wanted to be inside the box that she was in. And it's how I found my place. I wanted to be everything that she was at that time. And I owe so much to her. Do what you do as fierce as you can. Do it with excellence. Do it with kindness. Do it with, uh, with generosity. Um, do it with, with strength and wisdom and passion and talent and skill and respect for others, um, that's how you honor, that's how you honor Marin. That's who Marin was. That's who Marin is. That's who Marin always will be. Hi, I'm Jason Danieli, husband of Marin Maisie for 21 extraordinary years. I think our relationship is going to continue forever and ever. There's no, there's no division between the two of us, which is comforting and uh, horribly devastating. Uh, so I move forward in her memory and in the way that she would like to live, have continued living. I think a wonderful way to remember Marin and to honor her legacy as theater artists as we move forward is to love one another. Live your life full of love. And leaders, if you have the opportunity to lead, lead with uh, a dedication to this art form that we have chosen. But uh, remember that Marin is uh, there with you, supporting you in, in every step of the way.